if there is any trouble with anyone we will take the session in the evening itself okay any trouble to anyone yes no no sir right so i will let you know the timings guys uh, it will be two hour session it will be mostly it will be ending before 1 o'clock so it may either start at 10:30 or 11 o'clock those who are nocturnal those who study at night i believe that you people can get up at 10:30 or 11 so that is the reason if not i would have kept it very early in the morning okay so we have done some questions yesterday right few questions we have discussed uh, one was regarding a myopic eye other was uh, related to real depth and apparent depth the third case was based on uh, compound microscope guys these three questions we have done so around 40 questions are there and we have around 1 hour 40 minutes of time hopefully we will try to complete all those questions okay right if you look at the next question so let us see this question guys here we have the question uh, the refractive indices of a glass prism for red yellow and violet lights are given what is the dispersive power they are asking so how will you find dispersive power guys as you all know dispersive power will be given as the ratio of what it is given as the ratio of angular dispersion to mean deviation yes or no all of you what is angular dispersion it is mu v minus mu r into a what is mean deviation again it is mu minus 1 into a so we know angular dispersive power is given as mu v minus mu r divided by mu minus 1 yes or no is that clear so what are the refractive indices given for us the refractive indices as you can see for uh, red light it is 1.690 for violet light it is 1.705 so directly i can write 1.705 minus 1.690 divided by what is mu value here mu happens to be mean refractive index and as i said yesterday it can be taken as refractive index of yellow light also Yeah, people joining late here, huh? You can take it as refractive index of yellow light also. So what will I get here? I am getting it. I will be getting it as one point six nine five minus one, guys. So what will this turn around to be? Again, don't try to write down the uh, subtraction and all over here. So as we can see, you will get this as how much, guys? Zero point zero one five. Yes or no? I'll get zero point zero one five. I guess right. Divided by how much will you get this as? i think you'll get it as 0.695 i believe so whatever it is you can just solve for this guys you will get 15 divided by 695 or 15 divided by 700 you can take and you will get the corresponding answer is that okay all of you dispersive power again it is given as ratio of dispersion to deviation guys clear everyone yes or no my audible hello yes sir yeah. i hope it is clear next case next question let us discuss <clears throat> in uh, choose the incorrect statement they are asking guys in rayleigh scattering the amount of scattering is inversely proportional to fourth power of wavelength yes the amount of scattering will be inversely proportional to fourth power of statement guys this is your correct statement right secondary rainbow is fainter than primary rainbow it is also a correct statement guys now please understand secondary rainbow how it is formed direct question you will get again it is a previous year question also primary rainbow is formed by three phenomena guys the reflection sorry refraction internal reflection not total internal reflection internal reflection as well as your dispersion guys primary rainbow is formed by refraction dispersion internal reflection secondary rainbow is formed by refraction dispersion two internal reflections guys right so secondary rainbow is basically fainter than primary rainbow and it will be in reverse order again primary rainbow as you all know how will primary rainbow be above part will be red below part will be violet right secondary rainbow will be exactly reverse guys light of red color is scattered most it seems now we got to know rayleigh really scattering is inversely proportional to fourth power of wavelength so whichever has more wavelength it will have less scattering so they are saying light of red color is scattered more in atmosphere is this correct statement no it is wrong statement guys in reflecting telescope parabolic mirror can be used in order to remove spherical aberration yes it is a correct statement again okay so which of them is incorrect statement light of red color is scattered most in the atmosphere is the uh, incorrect statement because amount of scattering will be inversely proportional to fourth power of wavelength more the wavelength less the scattering as we all know red color has more wavelength so it will have less scattering guys is that clear 
yes or no right yes, we will do this we will do this question in a while because the below question as i can see is also uh, a conceptual question so we will discuss that guys uh, choose the incorrect statement for a good telescope they are asking now in telescope what are the cases we should know it has high magnifying power yes or no what is magnifying power of telescope given as it is given as minus f not divided by fe and as i said in normal adjustment case we will talk about in telescope which lens will be larger guys which lens will be larger objective lens will be larger it will have more focal length so here f not is greater than fe so it has high magnifying power is correct statement resolving power of telescope is inverse the, is proportional to 1 by lambda is it correct what is resolving power given as yesterday we have seen it is given as d by 1.22 lambda so is it inversely proportional to wavelength yes it is inversely proportional to wavelength and directly proportional to 1 by lambda so second one is also correct statement right now what they are asking brightness of image is proportional to square of the diameter yes brightness will depend on intensity intensity will be depending on area more the area available more the light will be coming out of the telescope or more light can be incident on telescope and more brightness or more intensity of light will be there so third one is also a correct statement guys brightness of image is proportional to the square of the diameter of object lens it is correct now resolving power is larger when red light is used instead of blue light it seems resolving power is inversely proportional to wavelength as you can see so more the wavelength less will be the resolving power or not so red light will have more wavelength so its resolving power will be less so this will be your wrong statement and out of the given options this will be the correct option is that clear is that clear all of you yes sir now yesterday we have seen let us come to this question now a plano concave lens fits into a plano convex lens it seems someone has messaged or what take a plano concave lens fits into a plano convex lens okay their plane surfaces are parallel to each other as shown focal length of the combination they are asking so can i consider this to be as one of the lens can i consider this to be as the other lens or not guys now how are these two lens are they in contact with each other yes they are directly in contact with each other so because they are in contact with each other what will be the effective focal length given as 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 and what is f1 here first lens it is a plano concave lens so what will be focal length for plano concave lens yesterday we have seen whenever a term concave comes into picture focal length will be negative what will it be minus r divided by mu minus 1 yes or no all of you yes or no so what is the radius of curvature here r one same radius of curvature it has so directly you can take uh, minus 20 divided by what is refractive index of plano concave lens it is given as 1.4 1.4 minus 1 you can take which will be 0.4 so you can write it as 200 divided by 4 which is minus 50 cm is this clear all of you is this part clear everyone yes sir i hope it is clear second case if you see guys second case happens to be which case plano convex lens and again yesterday we have seen whenever a term convex comes into picture focal length will be positive and for a plano convex lens it is given as r divided by mu minus 1 both of them have same radius of curvature you can write 20 but what is uh, the refractive index of plano convex lens 1.5 is it 1.6 is given guys so what we can write here i am going to get it as 1.6 minus 1 which is 0.6 again you will get it as 200 divided by 6 so you can write 200 by 4 200 by 6 as it is or 100 by 3 also you can take it as is that clear now two lenses are in contact with each other effective focal length they are asking so what we can write 1 by f effective will be first one has negative focal length so i can write 1 by minus 1 by 50 you can write plus second one has positive focal length you can write 3 divided by 100 so if i take the lcm as 100 guys you will get it as minus 2 plus 3 which will be 1 by 100 so what is the effective focal length that we are going to get the effective focal length will be plus 100 cm clear again very important concept it is involving combination of lenses and it is also involving uh, the lens maker formula understood everyone right tomorrow onwards no i will give a 15 minute 
uh, grace time guys because some people are in fast and all so 15 minute grace time i am going to give after 15 minute whoever is joining the session i am just going to stop the session i am not i am not going to allow them to the session guys 15 minute grace time i am going to give 7:45 to 8 o'clock this will be the grace time if the class is starting at 7:30 till 7:45 will be the grace time after that whoever will come to the class i am not going to allow them to the class let us be little bit uh, discipline enough and punctual enough to the class guys because we are close to the exam again now the first statement in the next question has been asked in previous year guys okay if you look at the uh, first statement the optical density of a turpentine is higher than that of water while its mass density is lower so directly one statement from ncrt only guys this is a direct ncrt statement again right so again if i take a object if i take a certain material whose mass density is more two materials i am taking one of them has higher mass density it is not necessary that the material which has higher mass density should also have higher optical density guys is that clear all of you whichever material has more mass density it is not necessary for that material to have high optical density as is the case here guys optical density of turpentine is higher than that of water while its mass density is lower so what they are asking the figure shows a layer of turpentine floating over water in a container for which of the four rays incident on the turpentine in figure the path may be correct see turpentine has more refractive index because it is optically denser what is the meaning of optical denser it has more refractive index and water will have less refractive index compared to turpentine so as you can see a ray is traveling from turpentine to water so first thing here you see which medium is this you can consider this to be as some air okay mu1 what is this medium turpentine this is mu1 you can take what is this medium you can consider it as mu2 okay now initially this ray you take first ray or second ray or third or fourth ray whatever it is right third ray is it possible will it be correct in third ray is there any deviation guys in third ray is there any deviation no deviation so will that be correct no third one will be absolutely wrong guys okay while if i take uh, second ray now in second ray there is some deviation while it is entering from air to turpentine so whenever it moves from rarer to denser medium so in this if i ask you what is the relation here what will the relation be mu1 is greater than mu2 will be greater than mu so you see here when it is traveling from mu to mu1 it is traveling from rarer to denser so it should bend towards the normal so in first case second case and fourth case it is bending towards the normal in third case there is no deviation so third case is wrong so it may be first case it may be second case it may be fourth case okay now if you look at uh, the first case guys now what is happening here this will be a case of negative refractive index guys so usually when it is traveling from turpentine to water is it traveling from denser medium to rarer medium yes it is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium so it should bend away from the normal guys so if you look at fourth case is it bending away from the normal yes it is bending away from the normal so fourth can be correct right whereas first one will be wrong first one will be correct when this material has negative refractive index guys there there will be materials which have negative refractive index but as far as neat is concerned we don't talk about negative refractive index again now can second one be correct you should tell me can second one be correct yes sir yes why whenever light travels from denser medium to rarer medium is there a possibility for total internal reflection to take place yes there is a possibility for total internal reflection to take place so both second one and fourth one will be correct so two will be correct four will be correct three will be wrong so directly i can say fourth option will be our correct option is that clear it is not both second option and fourth option guys it is both two and four i hope you understood very basic logic of refractive index again refraction part whenever light ray travels from rarer to denser the refracted ray should bend towards the normal when it is traveling from denser to rarer the refracted ray should bend away from the normal and one more important point that you need to know 
whichever material has more mass density there is no necessity for it to have more optical density clear all of you this question clear everyone yes sir i hope it is clear right next case you see choose the correct options it seems regarding optical instruments resolving power of microscope is proportional to refractive index of medium between the object and objective again direct questions you will get from resolving power guys resolving power of microscope when we talk about resolving power of microscope in really criteria last topic of yesterday we have seen it is given as 2 mu sin theta divided by lambda or 1.22 lambda also you can write now theta is not limit of resolution here guys what is theta what is mu again if we talk about mu mu is refractive index between it is refractive index of medium between object and objective lens between object and objective lens okay lambda as you all know it is wavelength of light used what is theta here if i talk about very important theta also theta is your semi vertex cone angle of light incident on the objective guys so in microscope we have seen that objective lens will be a smaller lens ips lens will be a larger lens yes or no now this is our objective lens let us imagine we have an object here okay so what will you have this is our object now between the object and objective lens whatever medium is there mu is the refractive index of that medium and from object which rays will come guys incident rays if it is a real object i told you yesterday if it is a real object you will have divergent type of incident rays if it is a virtual virtual object then convergent type of incident rays so from this particular object we are going to have divergent rays or not so you can say till here refraction will take it can throw light rays here also it can throw light rays here also it can throw light rays here also but i am only talking about light rays which are falling on the objective lens guys so can it form till here or not the incident rays which are coming out of object falling on the objective lens they will undergo refraction till here and till here you will also have one more incident ray but will this incident ray undergo refraction guys no will this ray undergo refraction no so if you look at this diagram is it in the form of cone or not guys yes it is in the form of cone so this angle this total angle will be vertex angle half of that angle will be semi vertex angle guys so resolving power of microscope will be directly proportional to mu will be directly proportional to theta and inversely proportional to wavelength now let us come back to the statement resolving power of microscope is proportional to refractive index of medium between object and objective correct statement correct statement or not yes correct yes. statement resolving wow. power is proportional to wavelength of light it seems is it directly proportional to wavelength no no it is inversely proportional to wavelength so both 1 and 3 will be correct options clear understood all of you yes sir you will get see please don't worry guys as far as physics is concerned don't worry at all because in neat the level of physics from 2019 odisha paper has been decreasing only right you take from 2019 paper 2019 2019 odisha paper 2020 phase 1 2020 phase 2 2021 2022 6 papers they were all easy to moderate none of the paper was difficult and i'm saying from student point of view i'm not talking about teacher point of view guys right so don't worry about physics definitely you will be able to solve 30 questions if it is your day you can solve all those 30 questions correctly okay so don't worry about physics just go again i'm not saying you to uh, don't practice do practice i as i said do practice previous year questions listen to questions what i am discussing do the test what i am giving and whatever test we are doing please analyze that test that would be very much sufficient again right so a bulb is 1 meter below the surface of a pond it seems bulb is a source of light or not guys yes bulb is a source of light so this is a case so let us imagine we have a pond something in this manner 
we have a source of light placed at the bottom somewhere over here guys so we have a bulb let us take it point o at how much distance it is let us say it is at a depth of 1 meter what they have said critical angle is 45 degrees critical angle is given ic value is given to us which is 45 degrees so if i assume that it has refractive index mu water has refractive index mu surrounding medium if i take it as 1 then how can i write sin ic value at again light has to travel from denser to rarer medium so from the object you are going to have incident rays like this and that object can throw incident rays in all directions i am showing only two dimensional case here guys but it can throw incident rays in all directions so this will be our normal and this will be our normal till what angle will refraction take place till an angle equal to critical angle refraction will take place above this angle there will not be any refraction at this angle what will happen to refracted ray it will graze the surface is this clear all of you yes or no they are asking us then maximum area of the surface of water from which light will come out so uh, we have done this question also again is it going to come out through this much area or not guys light will be able to come out through this much area right so how can i write sin ic value can you please tell sin ic kya likh sakte bhai when it is traveling from mu2 to mu1 i can write it as mu1 by mu2 yes or no so it is traveling from mu2 one can i write as 1 by mu guys yes so from this what will i get mu value as 1 by sin ic which will be 1 by sin 45 you will get sin 45 you know it is 1 by root 2 so refractive index i'll get it as root 2 they are asking area right what is the radius can you please tell me what is the radius i have told you on the other day radius is what h divided by under root of mu square minus 1 or not yes they are asking us to find area what is the area it will be pi r square so i can write it as pi h square divided by mu square minus 1 mu value we got root 2 mu square will be 2 minus 1 is anyhow 1 only h will also be h square will also be 1 only what is pi value guys is it 3.14 or not yes it is 3.14 so area you are going to get it as 3.14 meter square clear understood everyone direct total internal reflection concept again whenever a fish is present inside the uh, water the maximum area through which it can see the outside world will be pi h square divided by mu square minus 1 i have told you this maximum radius through which it can see the outside world will be h divided by under root of mu square minus 1 understood all of you re haan ya na bhai i hope you have understood that Yes, sir. Let us move to the next question. Right, the angle of minimum deviation prism question again, guys. Angle of minimum deviation produced by a prism having prism angle sixty degrees. So, what is angle of prism given here? Angle of prism is given as sixty degrees. What is the minimum deviation given? Minimum deviation is given as forty-six degrees. they are asking us to find refractive index of the material direct question or not yes or no yaar what is the refractive index it will be given as sin of a plus delta minimum divided by 2 whole divided by what beta sin of a by 2 yes or no are ha ya na yaar yes so what is 60 plus 46 One not six. One not six by two will be fifty-three again. So what will I get mu value as? I'll get it as sine fifty-three divided by sine sixty by two will be thirty. Years. What is sine fifty-three? Can you kindly mute your audio, whoever it is? Huh? Whenever you are responding, please unmute it. Sine fifty-three is how much, guys? It is four by five. Sine thirty is how much? 1 by 2 ah. so you will get the answer as 8 by 5 which is 1.6 direct question again guys 1.6 will be the refractive index of the material i hope it is clear all of you yes or no yes sir let us solve the question for again telescope is given astronomical telescope yesterday we did microscope 
Today we are doing telescope. Please listen carefully, guys. Okay. Focal length of objective and eyepiece uh, of an astronomical telescope are given. So what is the focal length of objective lens? It is given as 50 centimeters. Focal length of eyepiece is given as how much better? 5 centimeters. The magnifying power of this telescope when image is formed at near point. What is near point? 25 centimeters, least distance of distinct division. Yes or no? When will the image form at least distance of distinct division? When will it form? Stressed. Which eye condition, guys? Stressed in eye, yeah. strained. Stress or strain, alag hai, Vaishno. Which, which condition? Strained eye condition. In strained eye condition, what is our magnification, beta? It is basically given as F0 by Fe into 1 plus Fe by D or not? Yes or no, all of you? Minus F0 by Fe. Minus indicates that it is an inverted image again. So what is F0 value? 50 by 5 into 1 plus Fe value is 5. D value is 25. So I'm going to get it as 10 into 1 plus 1 by 5, which turns out to be 10 into 6 by 5 you will get, which will be 12, guys. Clear? That equation again? Now, this to anyhow you know. But let us try to understand the ray diagram for astronomical telescope in uh, the strained eye condition. So as I said yesterday, that simple microscope will contain one convex lens. Compound microscope will contain two convex lenses. One will be objective, other will be eyepiece. In compound microscope, which lens will be larger? Eyepiece. Eyepiece lens will be larger. Astronomical telescope also, it will contain two convex lenses. One will be objective, other will be eyepiece. Which will be larger? Objective. Objective will be larger. So if you look at this, I am going to have objective lens something in this manner, guys. This is our objective lens. And let us take, or I will take only objective lens first. What is the use of a telescope? Why is a telescope used? in order to view a distant object, yes or no, far away object. So object is somewhere very far. So when an object is far, can I say the incident rays coming from the object will be parallel lines or not? Yes or no, object is far means object is at infinity. From infinity rays are coming, it means those rays are going to be parallel. So I'll take two parallel rays guys. So I'll take one of the rays, something in this manner. And that ray is passing through the optical center. Let us imagine something like this. It is passing through the optical center. Other ray is also parallel in this manner. What will convex lens do? Can you please tell? Convex lens will converge the lens or not? Converge the rays or not? So what will happen? It is going to converge it in this manner. Something I say. Clear all of you guys? So these are our incident rays. These are our refracted rays. Now please tell me, is the image being formed here or not? Yes. Where is the object? Can you please tell? Where is the object? I, I want to view an object which is very far away. So I'm going to make use of telescope. The object is at infinity. Where will the image be formed, beta? Image will be formed at the focus of the objective. And image formed by the objective, will it behave as object for eyepiece or not? So you will take the eyepiece lens now. Eyepiece lens, as we all know, it is going to be a little bit smaller again. So I am just showing it like this, guys. So eyepiece lens is smaller. You can take it like this. This is our eyepiece lens. Clear all of you? Now, image formed by the objective will behave as what? Object for the eyepiece lens or not, guys? Eye lens also you can say or eyepiece also you can consider. Now, in strained, in strained eye condition, how much should be object distance? 25 um, millimeter. No. In strained eye condition, what should be object distance? I'm saying I have not asked you where should the final image be formed. In strained eye condition, uh, final image will be formed at least distance of distinct division. But in case of strained eye condition, where will this image be formed? Image formed by the objective will behave as IPs, guys. And eyepiece will have same function as that of the convex lens used in simple microscope. Yes or no? Yes. So in strained eye, object distance should be less than focal length or not? Because it has to be less than focal length. 
our focal length of eyepiece will be somewhere over here. Clear all of you? So you, as you can see, from here to here, from here to here, what is this value? This is F0. From here to here, what is the value? This is object distance from eyepiece. So what will length of the tube be, beta? Length of the tube will be F0 plus UE. And in relaxed eye condition, this UE is nothing but FE. In strained eye condition, UE will be less than FE. Because it is less than FE, focal length of the eyepiece will be present somewhere over here. Is that clear, all of you? And if I take again further uh, refraction part, guys, you will get it something in this manner. So where will the final image be formed? Final image will be formed at least distance of distinct vision, something in this case, like this. You can take it somewhere in this manner. You can take it in any way. I'm just showing it randomly here, guys. OK, so this distance will be your capital D value. So for eyepiece, do I know the image distance? Yes. Do I know the focal length of the eyepiece? Yes. So by using lens formula, can I find the object distance? Yes. In the same manner, for objective, I know length of the tube also can I find or not? F0 value will be given to us. So you can find out UE value. F0 will be given. So length of the tube will be F0 plus UE. This will be the diagram in case of your strained eye condition. Understood all of you? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So this is our ray diagram in case of your which condition? strained eye condition for a astronomical telescope okay for a uh, astronomical telescope relaxed eye condition what will this point be this will not only be focus of the objective it will also be focus of the eyepiece and final image will be formed at infinity guys okay clear what will length of the tube be f naught plus ue in relaxed eye condition it will be F0 plus Fe. OK? Understood? Understood? Yes, sir. Now, how are the incident rays? Next question, you see. The ray diagram for rays before and after reflection from a mirror are given. Incident rays are like this, parallel incident rays. How are the reflected rays, guys? Converging or diverging? Converging. Right. So, so if you take a plane surface, if incident rays are parallel, reflected rays will also be parallel only. So which type of mirror will this be? It will be a concave mirror or a converging mirror, guys. Whenever diverging reflected rays we have, then it will be a convex mirror. Choose the correct statement, it seems. Shining of air bubble in water is due to TIR, correct? Correct statement? Yes, it is a correct statement, guys. Shining of diamond is increased if it is dipped in a transparent oil, it seems. We'll talk about that. Blue color has longer wavelength than red. Therefore, blue color is scattered more. Correct? No. No, this is a wrong no. statement. What they are saying, shining of diamond is increased if it is dipped in transparent oil, it seems. Will it be increased, guys? Oil will have less density again so it will travel from denser to rarer medium yes there is a possibility for this also so shining of air bubble in water no first first one is wrong guys shining of air bubble in water it is not due to tir it is due to interference guys we will study this in wave optics again interference due to thin films we talk about so shining of air bubble in water is due to interference it is not due to tir Shining of diamond is increased if it is dipped in transparent oil. Yes, it is correct statement. Why? Because oil floats on water. Yes or no? Diamond will have a refractive index somewhere around 2.4 or something like that, guys. Again, it is also directly given in NCRT. 2.42 or 2.4 you will have. Water, we know, refractive index of water will be 4 by 3, 1.33, we can say. Oil floats on water. Basically, it is less dense. Less dense again. Its mass density is less, but it can have more optical density, guys. So there may be a possibility that the transparent oil can have more density than water. Or I'm not saying more dense, more mass density. I'm talking about optical density, guys. 
so it may have more optical density than water or less optical density than water however its density will be less than diamond so whenever light is traveling from diamond to oil so there is a possibility for tir to take place so that is the reason shining of diamond will be increased if it is dipped in a transparent oil is that clear shining of air bubble in water it is because of interference due to thin film it is not due to total internal reflection understood all of you is that clear yes sir let us do the next question what they have given a concave spherical surface is given of radius of curvature 60 cm separates two media one has a refractive index 1.2 and other has a refractive index of 1.5 an object is placed in first medium at a distance of 10 cm from the pole from the surface position of the image from the pole they are asking concave spherical surface concave means what is the condition should be bulge inwards or not this is our concave surface so they have given there is a concave surface it seems which is separating two transparent media guys you can take this is a concave surface this would be the pole of the surface and you can imagine this to be our principal axis guys So it is separating two transparent media. Here refractive index is one point two. Here refractive index is one point five. Okay. What they have given object is placed in first medium. Here you have the object, guys. It is lying at a distance of how much? Ten centimeters. It seems. So I will take. So can I imagine this particular concave surface? Very important, beta. To be part of some sphere like this or not? Can I take it to be part of some sphere? yes so that sphere will have center somewhere over here i can take it center to be somewhere over here where is the object present object is present somewhere over here all the measurement should be taken from as i said they should be taken from the pole so from pole towards the object what is this distance given as u and how much is it again uh, from object which type of rays will come guys incident rays you can take it something like this right so i'm just drawing the ray diagram over here this will be the case a point on a curved surface will behave as a point on a curved surface will behave as which surface beta plane surface, plane surface. Plane and surface. if you draw a normal at that point it will pass through center of curvature so is it traveling from rarer medium to denser medium or not uh, because it is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium what is going to happen it should bend towards the normal this will be our final refracted ray again okay so u value should be taken as what because it is being measured opposite to direction of incident rays i should take u value as minus 10 cm and what should be our uh, radius of curvature again all measurement should be taken from pole guys radius of curvature is also measured opposite to direction of incident rays so it should also be taken as minus 60 cm clear now what is so here refraction is taking place at spherical surfaces so what is the formula that we apply beta mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r what is mu2 it is that particular medium in which refracted rays are present or image is formed guys so what is the medium in which refracted rays are present 1.5 divided by v what is mu1 refractive index of the medium in which object is present or incident rays are there in which medium is incident rays present 1.2 how much is object distance minus 10 should be equal to 1.5 minus 1.2 what is radius of curvature beta minus 60 in ray optics sign convention plays a very vital role formulas are also going to play a role but sign convention is very very important again guys what we can take this so you can write it as 1.5 divided by v plus 1.2 by 10 should be equal to you will get it as 0.3 minus 0.3 divided by 60 so 1.5 divided by v you can take uh, so 0.3 once 0.34 0.35 you will get guys yes or no so i can directly write it as pi by v will be equal to if i send this on the other side So you have minus one by sixty. So what will I get? Minus one by sixty. If I send this on the other side, 
minus 4 by 10 you will get as we all know 60 would be the LCM you will get minus 1 minus uh, 24 you will get guys yes or no all of you yes or no yaar so what will I get 5 by V value will be minus 25 divided by 60 so 5 ones and 5 fives 5 ones and 5 twelves so V value what we are going to get will be minus 12 centimeters so what is the image distance from the surface it will be 12 centimeters and where will that image be formed see these rays will appear to come from this particular point so virtual image is formed here guys it will be at what distance 12 centimeters from the surface clear all of you understood how to apply refraction at spherical surfaces mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 by r very important thing is to identify the sign conventions here object distance and radius of curvature are being measured opposite to direction of incident rays so they should be taken as negative right i have not found out i have not uh, substituted the sign convention of image distance but at the, in the end i am going to get the sign convention also what did i get sign convention we got negative it means the image will be lying to the left side again clear all of you understood i hope it is clear next question let us see guys if the focal length of concave lens is 30 centimeters you see here very important case again how are the rays these are incident rays again are they converging into a point or not are they converging into a point guys yes so whenever they are converging into a point what can i tell about this object which object is it for a virtual object concave lens can form a real image guys it can form what image real image what will concave lens do basically concave lens will behave as a diverging lens so what will it do it will send the rays away something like this it will also send the rays away something in this manner and there is a possibility for these rays to meet somewhere over here because the rays are really meeting guys which image will be formed real image will be formed so for a virtual object a concave lens can form a real image is that clear all measurements should be taken from where should the measurements be taken in case of yes. lens it should yes. be taken from optical center guys so if the focal length of the concave lens is 30 centimeters distance of image they are asking do i know object distance do i know object distance yes i know object distance all the measurements should be taken from optical center is this our object distance is this distance measured in the direction of incident rays guys yes so it should be taken as what should be taken as positive is that clear all of you right so what we can write lens formula what is lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f i don't know image where it is formed but what is object distance because it is measured in the direction of incident rays what i can take it as can i take it as positive or not plus 15 you will get should be equal to 1 divided by what is focal length of concave lens beta i have written yesterday again focal length of concave lens is negative and how much will it be minus 30 you can write so if i send it on the other side what will i get minus 1 by 15 is there if you send it on the other side you will get 1 by 15 minus 1 by 30 so obviously 30 will be the lcm you will get it as 2 minus 1 right which is 1 divided by 30 implies what will v value be beta 30 centimeters clear direct lens formula application but here you need to understand a concave lens can form real image a convex mirror also can form real image for which type of uh, objects will concave lens and convex mirror form real images they are going to form for virtual objects or whenever the incident rays are converging type guys understood yes or no clear hello clear all of you yes sir. let us see one more question before we move on to the other set of questions which were actually designed for today's class because we are running a little bit late uh, first session and second session we took a little bit uh, 
we went little bit slow guys so that is the reason it didn't go as per plan but anyhow by the end of three classes we thought of completing ray optics they will it will complete it, guys for a normal eye the distance between retina and cornea eye lens is 5 by 3 so you are going to have right cornea something like this also you are going to have eye lens guys both are convex only why because you see if the cornea of eye provides a converging power of 40 diopter and converging power of eye lens behind the cornea is 21 diopter what they are asking to see the distant object the power of the lens required to this person is how much they are asking okay now you see very easy case for a normal eye distance between retina and cornea eye lens so you are going to have another eye lens also something like this okay so this is the combination of our eye guys this has how much power plus 40 diopters this has how much power plus 21 diopter here you have the retina and what is the distance they have given from here till retina you have how much distance 5 by 3 centimeters now please tell me are these two lenses in contact or not so whenever lenses are in contact what will be the effective focal length it will be 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 or directly i can write power only if you want to write because they are asking us to find the power of the lens guys now you see right for a normal human eye i am talking about normal human eye let us not talk about the correction here guys right for a normal human eye there is an object it can far point is infinity guys it means even when object is placed at infinity a normal human eye can see it means at large distance so when object is at large distance how will the rays be are they going to be parallel rays or not this will be our parallel rays which will be fall which will be falling on cornea islands combination and the final image will form exactly where at the retina this will be our final image this is the general image formation that takes place right now i don't know let us forget about what is the effective power of our eye let us forget about this okay i'm not talking it, it is given as 40 and 21 let us forget about it we know the distance between the combination of uh, cornea and eye lens as well as the retina is 5 by 3 centimeters where is the object for this combination if it is a normal human eye where is the object for this combination where are the rays coming from because they are parallel ha huh. so what will be object distance here object distance i can take it as minus infinity where is the image formed beta image where is it formed it is formed on the retina so from this combination what is image distance five is it going to be 5 by 3 or not very good so it will be how much 5 by 3 centimeters which is positive can i apply lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u should be equal to 1 by f so what is this f here this is the focal length of the effective combination actual focal length of the effective combination so what we can write 1 divided by 5 by 3 minus 1 by minus infinity should be equal to what beta 1 by f so what will i get 3 by 5 anyhow anything divided by infinity would be 0 should be equal to 1 by f so what we can take this is in uh, per centimeter so if i want to convert into meters again what will i get 300 divided by 5 meter inverse will be equal to 1 by f what is 1 by f beta in case of lens is it power or not so what will the power be here it has to be 60 diopters okay so in reality the normal human eye should have how much power such that the image has to be formed at retina it has to have a power of plus 60 diopter is that clear is that clear now i will take these two what is the effective power because they are connected in combination with each other will i get some of individual powers or not so what is effective power that we are getting plus 40 diopters plus 21 diopters guys so what is our effective power we are getting plus 61 diopters i am getting so i have more converging power when more converging power is there guys image will be formed in front of the retina it will not be formed on the retina whenever resolving power of the eye lens is more 
image will be formed in front of the retina if the resolving power of the eye lens is less image will be formed behind the retina for image to form exactly on the retina how much should be the power of our eye lens 60 diopter but how much power is given 61 diopter so what is the correction that i need to apply what is the Minus. power of the corrected lens the corrective minus. lens should be a minus. concave lens of minus 1 diopter understood are yes or no you understand yes, all of you right this is how we are going to uh, solve for this particular question what were what was given to us distance of the retina from the eye lens was given which is 5 by 3 so if the object is at infinity and if i want to see that object clearly the image should be formed at the retina so for the image to form at the retina what should be the power of the human eye guys it should be 60 diopter but what they have given to a 61 diopter so here power is more so where will the image be formed it will be formed in front of the retina but i want the image to form on the retina so i have to use a corrective lens because it is negative it will be a concave lens of power 1 diopter clear just give me a second understood all the questions all of you we still have more questions ha huh? don't say ha oh, amma questions ay pena rabao bani also ji sir bataiye so we know how do we know that uh, exactly the um, corrective lens should have power of minus 1 वेर इज दी करेक्ट अरे सिक्सटी डी होना चाहिए कितना है 61. तो क्या करोगे प्लस करोगे सप्रैक्ट करोगे कितना सप्रैक्ट टू डायप्टर करोगे वन डायप्टर करोगे तो किया ना ओके यस हाउ मच इट हैज टू बी एक्चुअली सिक्सटी हाउ मच इट इज सिक्सटी वन सो वट आई शुड डू आई शुड रिमूव वन एनी डाउट इन दीज क्वेश्चन इन दीज सेट ऑफ क्वेश्चन Any doubt in this set of questions, all of you? No, sir. No, sir. Shall we proceed to the next set of questions? अरे yes, sir. And जब पन राव उपले देन राव आप वो मिलो आसल हो. मासूद सर students and इतना उन्हें तोड़ लो इतना ही पेरो. हम्म. ठीक है. It is maybe I am only to blame. Right. Let us see. some other set of questions so that we can complete ray optics tomorrow by hook or by crook i will complete wave optics in the evening you are supposed to write the test of ray optics and wave optics the test will be open for certain time only it is not that you will be writing as per your wish guys okay so it will be a one hour test and i am going to keep it active only for two hours duration okay i am going to keep it active only for how much duration two hour duration that will be from 7:30 to 9:30 which is usual class timing class will be in the morning 7:30 to 9:30 in that duration only you should write the test okay one hour test right automatically after one hour is done the test will be cancelled please mention your email id there ha huh? xyz@gmail.com beta kandi correct ga em email id undo mi per meeda ha huh? just for you at the rate gmail.com ha huh? i am magic at the rate gmail.com please don't keep these things guys okay whatever your name is there you please uh, send it Don't use your father or mother email ID. They are not writing neat exam for you. So is there a test on third also? Huh? Third, Kali to hai. So Kal second is it? Kal second hai. Acha. So third morning you write the exam then. Is the, I thought the exam is tomorrow. Okay. ठीक है. We will we will see. I forgot the schedule then. Uh, when was when was wave optics supposed to be completed? Second or third? So today, hey, not ray optics, wave optics. So, you have given wave optics solution. So, one side is there. So, third go. So, there will be another day also, no? Then. Hey, man, the person who is studying doesn't remember the teaching schedule. What will I do? It has, it has to be complete on third. Yeah, some part of it should be complete on third, guys. Okay, okay. So, third, you write the test. already the paper is ready the third you can write the test chalo let us do the other questions without wasting much time a small insect is at 60 cm from concave mirror of focal length 
20 centimeters what is the image distance direct question again guys concave mirror when i take right concave mirror when we are taking is it is a part of a sphere outer surface will be silvered you are going to have principal axis focal length of concave mirror will always be negative it will be minus 20 centimeters there is certain object it seems object is placed over here so what is the object distance it is given as how much beta 60 centimeters again all the measurements should be taken from where from me or from you from pole guys from pole. right so what will be the mirror formula 1 by v plus 1 by u will be equal to what beta 1 by f so what we can write I, they are asking us to find image distance what will object distance be for a real object always remember for a real object object distance for a concave mirror will be negative only so what will i write here minus 60 and focal length of a concave mirror negative only what will i write here minus 20. So if i send it on the other side guys i will get it as 1 by 60 minus 1 by 20 60 will be the lcm you will get it as 1 minus 3 which is minus 2 by 60 which turns out to be minus 1 by 30 so where will the image be found at 30 centimeters clear Yes or no? I hope it is clear. Okay. Next. Yes, sir. What they have given refractive index of glass with respect to water is 9 by 8. Please listen carefully, guys. Refractive index of glass with respect to water means is it mu to 1? Mu to 1 is nothing but refractive index of 2 with respect to 1. I can write that as refractive index of glass with respect to refractive index of water. What is this given as? 9 by 8. What are they saying? If velocity of light in glass is 2 into 10 power 8, what is the velocity in water? Very basic logic. What is refractive index given as? Is it C by V or not? Yes, it is C by V. So from this, what we can write better? The refractive index is inversely proportional to what? Speed. So what we will write here? Speed of light in water to speed of light in glass will be 9 by 8. So speed of light in water will be 9 by 8 times of speed of light in glass, which is 9 by 8 into 2 into 10 power 8, which turns out to be 18 by 8. What will 18 by 8 be, guys? 2 point, how much? 2.25? 2 2.25 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Clear? Direct question or not? Diffractive index inversely proportional to speed refractive index inversely proportional to wavelength refractive index independent of frequency when light travels from one medium to another medium frequency unchanged wavelength changes speed changes these are basic things again clear all of you yes or no yes, yes, sir. let us see the next question which is also a good question a ray of light is traveling in air falls on a transparent glass slab of refractive index root 3. So you can take, there is a certain glass slab, guys. I'm just showing the interface over here. So I'm just drawing the interface. A ray of light is falling. Uh, refractive index is given as root 3. A refracted and refract reflected rays are mutually perpendicular. What is the angle of incidence they're asking? Okay. So here you have mu value as root 3. Here you have air has refractive index 1. Now there is an incident ray traveling something in this manner. Let us imagine this to be our point of incidence. So this will be our normal guys. It is incident at a certain angle. Let us say that angle is I. Now please try to understand is the incident ray traveling from rarer to denser or not? Because it is traveling from rarer to denser, some part of it will get reflected some part of it will get refracted usually we study refraction separately reflection separately now this will behave as a denser medium so whenever light is incident at a denser medium what will happen beta a part of it will also get reflected angle of incidence should also be equal to what beta angle of reflection this will again be i only now if this interface was not there incident ray would have traveled like this or not if the interface was not there incident ray would have traveled in this manner but because of the presence of the incident ray is it traveling from rarer to denser so it should bend towards the normal 
and how are reflected and refracted light moving they are moving perpendicular to each other what is this value beta this value is r they are asking what is angle of incidence i value they are asking guys what is angle in a straight line angle in a straight line enta bhai 180 degrees so you see i plus 90 degrees plus r can i write it as 180 degrees so what will i get i value as i'll get i value as or r value what we will get beta r because they are asking angle of incidence no r value will i get it as 90 minus i or not right now can i apply snell's law here obviously 1 into sin i should be equal to root 3 into sin r yes or no so 1 into sin i value will be root 3 into sin of r value can be written as 90 minus i what is 90 minus theta what is sin 90 minus theta cos theta cos theta so what we can write sin i value will be equal to root 3 into cos i sin by cos will be tan i beta tan i value will be equal to root 3 so i can also write i value as how much beta 60 degrees so when it is incident at 60 degrees reflected light and refracted light they will be moving perpendicular to each other understood is this clear yeah. i hope it is clear guys let us move on to the next question right a layer of oil 3 cm thick is floating on a layer of colored water 5 cm thick refractive index of colored water is 5 by 3 and apparent depths of two liquids appear to be 36 by 7 cm what is refractive index of oil they are asking direct question again whenever object is in denser medium for an observer in rarer medium will it be appearing to be present at a certain height above its actual presence or not yes or no beta so here we have uh, colored water blue colored water how much is the length here this is given as 5 cm yes or no this is given as 5 cm guys and above this you have some 3 cm layer of thick oil guys a layer of thick oil is floating on a layer of colored water and what is this height given as 3 cm they are saying that the apparent depth is 36 by 7 so who is observing observer in rarer medium is observing so actually if you see this is our interface yes or no general case of bucket guys whenever water is filled in a bucket if you try to observe the bucket will the bottom of the bucket be at a certain height above its actual presence or not yes so yes. what is the condition here this particular interface will appear to be at a certain height somewhere over here in the same manner this interface also will also shift to a certain height here guys clear all of you understood or not yes. what they are saying apparent depth of these two liquids is 36 by 7 in reality what is the depth if i am observing if we are observing in general in diagram if we are observing what should be the depth eight. what should be the depth 8 but will it be 8 guys no because concept of real depth and apparent depth again comes into picture so in reality it is 8 cm but will it appear to be 8 cm no how much will this part appear to be this part will appear to be 3 divided by mu of oil how much will this part appear to be 5 divided by mu of water so what is the total depth now 3 divided by mu not plus 5 divided by mu w i'll take another color yes or no reality if we are observing 8 cm but what is its what is its depth going to be 36 by 7 so what we can write here beta 3 divided by mu not 3 divided by mu not plus 5 divided by mu w should be equal to 36 divided by 7 what is refractive index of oil it's mentioned it is uh, colored water is given for oil they are asking colored water is given as 5 by 3 what we can write 3 by mu not plus Phi whole divided by phi by three should be equal to thirty six divided by seven. So I can write it as three by mu naught 
plus 3, you will get it as 36 by 7, guys. Or we can write 3 by mu naught value as if I send 3 on the other side. So you will get it as near about 25, uh, 15, I guess. 15 by 7 you will get, which will be 5 by 7. Mu naught will be 7 by 5, guys. What will mu naught value be? It will be 7 divided by 5 turns out to be 1.4. Clear? Understood all of you? Real depth apparent depth concept, which we have done in the last session also. Yes, sir. Diamond has some refractive index, it seems. What is the critical angle they're asking, guys? What is critical angle? How is critical angle given? Will it be given as sine inverse of 1 by mu or not? Yes. So what will this be, beta? Sine inverse of 1 divided by 2.42. OK. We know one thing. Sine inverse of 1 by 2. For what value will sine be 1 by 2? For 30 degrees. Yes or no? Now, will this value be less than 1 by 2 or not? Yes, it means angle should be less than 30 degrees, guys. So our answer will be how much? 24.4 degrees. Clear all of you? Yes or no? Dekho, beta, what is, how, how, sir, how did you tell this? Now, what is sine 30? Is it 1 by 2? So what will 30 degrees be? Sine inverse of 1 by 2. Yes or no? So sine inverse of 1 by 2 is 30. 1 by 2 is 0.5, beta. But 1 by 2.4 will be less than 0.5 or not? Yes. So our angle will be less than 30, which is near about 24.4 degrees Celsius. Clear all of you? Yes or no, yaar? Next question. A disk is placed on the surface of pond with liquid of refractive index. So mu value is given. How much is it? 5 by 3. A source of light is placed 4 meters below the surface h is also given four meters they are asking what should be the mini i told you two cases guys maximum area through which fish can see the outside world minimum area of the disc that has to be placed on the surface such that i am stopping refraction to take place means such that light is not coming out so what would be the minimum area beta minimum area of the disc that has to be placed on the surface in order to light in order for light to not come out will again be pi r square and what will r value be? h divided by under root of mu square minus 1. So what will you get this value as? Pi h square divided by mu square minus 1. So you can write it as pi into h value is given as 4 square. What is mu value given as? 5 by 3 whole square beta and minus 1. So you will get it as pi into 4 square divided by, can I write 5 square minus 3 square by 3 square? So again, I'll get it as 4 square divided by 3 square, which you will get it as 9 times of pi. So 9 threes are 27. So near about, it will be approximately 28.26 meters square. Clear? Clear all of you? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us see next question. A convex surface of radius of curvature 40 centimeters separates what is the image position they are asking can you solve for this question in the previous case we did concave surface now we have which surface beta convex surface is there it means like this bulged outward it is separating two uh, mediums now one of them has refractive index 4 by 3 other has refractive index 3 by 2 Right, this will be our common principal axis you can consider. It is convex surface, guys. Where is the object placed? From the surface, the object is placed at how much distance, beta? It has been placed at a distance, how much? 20 centimeters. Yes or no? Can I say this convex surface, will it be part of some sphere like this or not? It will be part of some sphere in this manner. Yes or no, everyone? Whose center of curvature will be somewhere over here? So what will radius of curvature be? They are asking us to find what is the image position. So radius of curvature, if I take from object, what will you get, guys? From object, you are going to have incident rays, something in this manner. So how is object distance measured? Opposite to the direction of incident rays. So object distance should be taken as negative. Whereas radius of curvature, beta? 
is it being measured in the direction of incident rays or not so it has to be taken as positive so what formula i am going to apply mu2 by v minus mu1 by u is equal to mu2 minus mu1 divided by r what is mu2 value here 3 by 2 whole divided by v what is mu1 value 4 by 3 what is u value beta minus 20 should be equal to 3 by 2 minus 4 by 3 what is uh, r value plus 40 guys sign conventions are really very important so 3 by 2 v this you will get it as uh, 4 1s 4 5s so you'll get it as 1 by 15 i think this will get it as 9 minus 8 i think you'll get it as 1 by 6 i guess yes or no beta? 1 by 6 means 1 by 240 you'll get so can you solve this question yes or no 9 minus 8 is 1 by 6 you will get 1 by 240 you are going to get guys or if you want you can you can keep it as it is you can write it as 4 by 60 okay so 3 by 2 v will be 1 by 240 minus 4 by 60 again you will get uh, lcm as 240 so which will be 4 uh, 1 minus how much will I get? 4 is, it is 16 guys. So minus 15 you are going to get again. What we can take from this? 3 by 2v will be equal to minus 15 divided by 240. Okay. So 3 ones, 3 fives, 2 ones, 2, how much? 120s. I think 24 centimeters should be the answer. Clear all of you? Understood all of you again. Refraction at curved surfaces. Mu2 by V minus Mu1 by U will be Mu2 minus Mu1 divided by R. Understood? Yes. Right. Now what they have given? Another question. If you see, a converging beam of light is incident on a concave lens of focal length 30, 20 centimeters. In the absence of lens, the beam converges at a point 10 centimeters behind the lens, it seems. There is a converging beam which is incident uh, on a concave lens whose focal length is 20 centimeters. In the absence of the lens, they are saying it is converging at a point 10 centimeters behind the lens, it seems. At what point will the beam converge or diverge after refraction? They are asking. Okay, so converging beam of light is incident on a concave lens. So we have taken a concave lens, something in this manner. Right, so you can consider this to be our principal axis. So some converging beam is incident beta, like this, in this manner. So what will concave lens do? Obviously, it is going to diverge. Yes or no? But uh, what I am feeling, what is wrong in this question is focal length is given as how much? Twenty centimeters. In the absence of lens, if lens is not there the beam converges at a point 10 centimeters behind the lens they have given which is wrong again suppose if i say uh, this is the lens if lens is not there the rays will appear to converge at this point guys so i hope this is given as object distance it cannot be behind the lens it will be in front of the lens only right so this will be our which object virtual object so if it is virtual object which image will be found beta a real image is going to be formed. This will be your ray diagram. A real image, a real intersection is going to take place somewhere over here in this manner. Which image will be formed? Real image will be formed. So from here to here, we have image distance. This is our object distance. So object distance is already given in this case. What is U value given as? If you look at the uh, question, U value is given as 10 centimeters, guys. Plus 10 only will take. What will focal length be? Minus 20 centimeters. They're asking us to find the uh, where will it converge after refraction. So again, can I apply lens formula? What is lens formula? 1 by V minus 1 by U will be equal to 1 by F. I can write 1 by V value as 1 by F plus 1 by U, which I'll get it as minus 1 by 20 plus 1 by 10. So if I take 20 as the LCM, I'll get minus 1 plus 2 which is 1 by 20 so what will i get v value as beta 
I'll get 20 centimeters. Yes or no? So what will be the situation here? If this is given as behind the lens, so obviously I will also write it is 20 centimeters behind the lens, guys. But it will not converge. It will. It has to diverge again. Hmm. Converging beam of light is incident on a concave lens or focal length 20 centimeters. Okay. In the absence of the lens, the beam is converging at a point 10 centimeters behind the lens. So maybe the whole exact situation is from right. I have drawn it from left side. So maybe that is from right, guys. So it has to diverge again because it is diverging lens. It is not going to further converge again. Okay. So you can just keep the question aside. I will just cross check this question, guys. We anyhow got 20 centimeters, but it should be diverging to 20 centimeters. Okay. We will we will do that case. I'll just cross check that question once again. I hope you understood whatever he's asking. Yes or no? Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Right. Yes. Next question, let us see. A converging lens of focal length 50 centimeters is placed coaxially in contact with another lens of unknown focal length. If the combination behaves like a diverging lens, it seems. So what would be the situation here, guys? They are placed in contact. So what will I get? 1 by F effective will be 1 by F1 plus 1 by F2. Diverging lens is nothing but which lens? Concave lens. So what will I get here? 1 by minus 50 i'll get what should be first focal length because it is converging you will get plus 50 plus 1 by f2 so what will i get 1 by f2 value as i'll get it as minus 1 by 50 minus 1 by 50 which turns out to be minus 2 by 50 which is minus 1 by 25 okay so this is in centimeter inverse if i want to write it in meter inverse guys so i'll get 1 by if i take 100 you will get it as minus 4 diopters so what is 1 by f? Is it power of the lens or not? So how much should the power of the second lens be? It should be minus 4 diopters. Clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Next question, let us see, guys. They have given a ray of light passing through equilateral triangular prism. From air, undergoes minimum deviation when angle of incidence is 3 by 4 times the angle of prism. Minimum, what is the refractive index they are asking? Okay. So, for it to undergo minimum deviation, they are saying angle of incidence is 3 by 4 times the angle of prism. In this case, it is undergoing minimum deviation, guys. Okay. Now, please tell me very simple logic. When will a ray of light undergo minimum deviation? For it to undergo minimum deviation, two cases we have seen. Angle of incidence should be equal to angle of emergence. Both the refraction angles should be equal. That should be equal to what beta? A divided by 2. Yes or no? They are asking us what would be the angle of the prism. So can I apply Snell's law again? Uh, they are asking refractive index of the prism. So what will I get Snell's law? Because it is traveling from air. I can write 1 into sin i value will be equal to mu into sin. How much beta? Sin r1 can I write? Yes. So ray of light passing through equilateral triangular prism from air undergoes minimum deviation. Equilateral triangular prism is given. So what will i value be? 3 by 4 into equilateral means 60 degrees or not? So will I get this as 45 degrees beta? Yes. What we can write here, sine of 45 degrees should be equal to mu into, what will this value be? Will it be 30 degrees or not? So I can write it as sine 30 degrees. Is that clear all of you? We have studied this yesterday now again. So what is refractive index? It is sine 45 divided by sine 30. So sine 45 is 1 by root 2. Sine 30 is 1 by 2. You will get the refractive index as root 2. Clear? Clear all of you? Minimum deviation in case of a prism. When will it undergo? At one particular angle of incidence only. So in that case, i and e value will be equal. R1 and R2 will also be equal, which will in turn be a divided by 2. Clear? Everyone? 
Yes, sir. Right. How we will see the uh, second, second, third question because it is a. Uh, we will do this islands question in some time. When light is refracted into a medium from vacuum, what will happen? It seems. Just now I have told the statement, guys. What will happen? Wavelength will change and frequency will remain same. Wavelength changes, frequency constant. So what will happen? Mm, so this will be wrong. This will also be wrong, right? And what will happen when light is refracted into a medium from vacuum? From vacuum, it is coming into medium. Wavelength will increase or not? And we know wavelength will be, uh, sorry, refractive index is increasing or not? Refractive index and wavelength are inversely related. So when it travels from vacuum into medium, refractive index increases. So wavelength will decrease, guys. Frequency will remain same. So what should be the answer? Third option should be the answer. Wavelength will decrease and frequency will remain same. Clear all of you? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Next case also let us see astronomical telescope. Then I'll go to the above question. In an astronomical telescope, focal length of objective lens. Focal length of objective lens is given as 75 centimeters. Eyepiece lens is given as 5 centimeters. What is the just now we have done the question again. What is the magnifying power if the final image is 25 centimeters from eye? 25 centimeters means least distance of distinct vision yeah. or not? Yes or no, yeah. least distance of distinct vision means strained eye. What is magnifying power in strained eye? Minus of F naught by F E into what beta? 1 plus F E divided by D, which will get it as 75 by 5, which will be 15. 1 plus F E value is how much? 5 divided by 25. So you'll get it as minus 15 into 1 plus 1 by 5 will be 6 by 5. I think you will get it as 18, guys. Clear all of you? Understood, everyone? Direct question again. Optical instruments, direct questions you are going to get, guys. Let us come to this question now. A person wears eyeglasses with a power of minus 5.5 diopter, it seems, for distance viewing. Okay, so basically he was myopic because the correction, as you can see, it is minus 5.5 after so myopic eye. We have his doctor prescribes a remedy of plus 1.5 diopter. They are saying for his near vision, near vision again, near vision also again. So what should be the focal length of the extra lens which should be pasted over the lower section of this? For his eyeglasses, for correct vision, they are asking, guys. So what is the situation? I have two lenses now. Right. A person wears eyeglasses with power minus 5.5 diopter for distant viewing. His doctor prescribes a remedy of plus 1.5 diopter, guys, for his near vision, it seems. What should be the focal length of the extra lens that should be pasted over lower section of the lower section for the uh, correct near vision they are asking so let us do this question later because it is related to human eye so we will not do it now so one cannot see through fog because what will happen in fog you can see three four options are there fog absorbs light light suffers total reflection of droplets light is scattered by droplets refractive index of fog is very high it seems what will undergo Hot one. which one Four. Refractive index of fog is very high. Next case. Converging glass lens is immersed in water. What will happen to the power of the lens they are asking? Now, if you take a mirror and if it is immersed in some medium, will focal length change, guys? No. No. Will power change? No. no. But no. here it is not mirror. It is a lens, guys. So if you take a lens initially, let us imagine it has some refractive index. We have taken a converging glass lens. It has some refractive index mu. Surrounding medium was initially vacuum. Now what has happened? Surrounding medium became water. Lens maker formula, if you see, power of the lens will be given as 1 by focal length of the lens, which is mu2 by mu1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Yes or no? Whatever are r1 and r2, let us keep them aside as of now. So in first case, 
when surrounding medium is vacuum what i'll get the power as mu divided by 1 i'll get mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 second case guys p2 if i consider what is the surrounding medium now water so what will i get mu divided by 4 by 3 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 is this clear all of you so what are we going to get just try to divide both of them so i am going to get p1 divided by p2 if i just divide both of them can i cancel this 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 obviously so what will this become mu minus 1 and what i'll be left out here 3 mu by 4 minus 1 guys okay so what is happening to the converging power so p2 value i want to find in terms of p1 so i'll get it as 3 mu by 4 minus 1 divided by mu minus 1 times of p1 so whether it is increasing or decreasing guys can you tell me whether it is increasing or decreasing glass lens is given it was not necessary to solve all this again because here you have water water has a refractive index of 4 by 3 and glass is given so obviously it will have refractive index of 3 by 2 if you take that as 3 by 2 so what we can write uh, if you take this as 3 by 2 how much will you get guys 9 by 8 so 9 by 8 minus 1 will be 1 by 8 3 by 2 minus 1 will be 1 by 2 times of p1 so i am going to get this as p1 divided by 4 so what has happened to the power of the lens Re reduced or increased reduced it has got decreased guys so whenever mirror if you take you are placing it in medium focal length will not change power will not change but if you take a lens and placing it a medium usually the power of the lens will decrease clear all of you is that clear yes or no yaar yes right okay now resolving power of compound microscope it seems what is resolving power of compound microscope resolving power they are asking what is d here d happens to be limit of resolution guys resolving power and limit of resolution are inversely proportional to each other so resolving power of compound microscope as you know it is 2 mu sin theta divided by lambda clear all of you yes or no yes many questions are left out i think lot of questions are there so what we will do is okay uh, we will just continue with the questions i thought conceptual questions we can deal together so which question i have left guys here a second it's not working is the board visible yes sir we have left this question okay i'll just discuss this question one cannot see through fog you have said refractive index of fog is very high is that correct again ncert question only it's correct guys now let us try to understand the next question find the ratio of least separation between two points to be distinguished for same objective by a microscope for light of wavelength 5000 angstrom and electrons accelerated through 100 volt is used as a illuminating substance guys they are asking us to find out what is the least separation between two point objects to be distinguished for same objective by a microscope for light of wavelength 5000 angstrom and electrons accelerated through 100 volts it seems so please tell me we, we have something called as de broglie wavelength guys in this situation so what is de broglie wavelength given basically de broglie wavelength for electron will be given as 12.27 divided by root v guys this you will get it in angstroms again so here this will be 12.27 divided by root 100 so i'm going to get it as 12.27 divided by 
which will be 1.227 angstrom okay to find the ratio of least separation between two points to be distinguished for same objective lens by a microscope for a light of wavelength 5000 angstrom and electrons accelerated through 100 volt so basically it is uh, minimum separation angular separation we can take or uh, the resolving power also we can take guys so in one case you have a microscope in other case you have an electron microscope okay one is compound microscope other is electron microscope so whatever is the case what is resolving power of microscope beta resolving power of microscope will be inversely proportional to wavelength so what i can take resolving power 1 divided by resolving power 2 will be equal to lambda 2 divided by lambda 1 so what is the second case i got it as 1.227 in first case you can take 5000 right or if they are asking us to find the ratio of uh, least separation again resolving power as well as your limit of resolution these are inversely proportional guys so i will get resolving power to be around 4057 i think because it is more than one no? if you had one you got 5000 if it is 1.2 you will get near about 4000 something like this okay the so resolving power we know it will be inversely proportional to what beta limit of resolution limit of resolution and angular separation are same okay angular separation they're not same but they are related directly related with each other so what we can write here the ratio of least separation between the two objects so i'll just tell you one basic logic guys if i take the objective lenses here and i want to see two objects o1 and o2 so from the lens again human eye if i take the case guys this will be your minimum angular separation theta right minimum angular separation you can say theta it is also called as limit of resolution guys and this will be our d distance between the two objects so is it length of the arc or not so basically as you know length of the arc will be directly proportional to angle subtended at the arc guys so the distance between the objects will be directly proportional to the angular separation angular separation is nothing but your limit of resolution limit of resolution and resolving power they will be inversely proportional to each other so what we can write here i can write d1 divided by d2 will be equal to rp2 divided by rp1 which i will get it as 4075 understood everyone yes or no again this concept we will study in dual nature guys uh, the if electron is accelerated through v volts its wavelength will be given as 12.27 divided by root v so one i have used wavelength of 5000 angstrom other i have got wavelength of 1.227 angstrom so we can find the resolving power ratios whatever is the ratios of resolving power exactly reverse will be the ratio of limit of resolution or ratio of angular separation or ratio of separation between the object space clear is that clear yes sir. let us see next question eyepiece of an astronomical telescope has focal length 10 centimeters the telescope is focused for normal vision of distant objects when tube length is one meter guys so what is tube length given as one meter and what they have also given f naught value object uh, sorry f e value eyepiece lens is given for eyepiece what is the focal length given as 10 centimeters telescope is focused for normal vision of distant objects when tube length is one meter it seems they are asking us what is the magnifying power of telescope guys so what would be the magnifying power of telescope length of the telescope how will you write length of the telescope as what will you write length of the telescope as guys it will be basically f naught plus f e so i can write one meter is 100 centimeters or not so you'll get 100 centimeters will be f naught plus f e value is 10 so f naught value will get it as 90 centimeters normal vision means normal adjustment i have told you normal adjustment is also relaxed eye condition guys so what is magnification i'm going to get f naught over f e 
which is 90 over 10 which will be 9 guys clear everyone length of the tube is given focal length of eyepiece is given can you find focal length of objective yes we can find focal length of objective if focal length of objective is known focal length of eyepiece is known can you find magnifying power yes or no yes we can find magnifying power as well okay next question let us see guys refractive index of material of plano convex lens it seems what is the refractive index if radius of curvature is 20 centimeters focal length is 60 centimeters last session i have derived it also guys what is focal length of a plano convex lens how much is focal length of a plano convex lens guys it is r divided by mu minus 1 so what will i get mu minus 1 value as r divided by f which is 60 divided by 20 i'll get it as 3 so what will refractive index be sorry did i do any mistake here radius is given as 20 guys someone's mic is turned on please kindly mute it radius of curvature is given as 20 focal length is given as 60 guys so i'll get it as 1 by 3 here So what will I get mu value as 1 plus 1 by 3 turns out to be 4 by 3. Clear? Direct question again which you have got. Next case if you see refractive indices of flint glass for red, yellow. Again similar question which we have done just before. Yes or no? What is dispersive power given as ratio of theta divided by delta? What will I get it as beta? Mu V minus mu R divided by mu minus 1. What is mu V? 1.632. What is mu R? 1.613. And what is mu? We can take it as 1.620. Can you solve for this question? Yes or no, R? Can you solve it? I'm not doing it again. So I can write 1.632 minus 1.613 divided by 1.620 minus 1. Can you solve for this, all of you? Yes. You can do this question. So we'll do uh, astigmatism can be removed by, right? Astigmatism can be removed by using cylindrical lens, guys. A section of the cylinder can be used to remove astigmatism. So what is astigmatism again? Eye lens will have inability to focus light at a single focal point. Okay. It cannot focus light from different objects at single focal point guys so that is called as astigmatism and it can be removed by using cylindrical lens let us do the question of astronomical telescope that would be the last question for the day and i think around 10 questions will be left guys which are direct questions again just like rainbow how is rainbow formed i've told you just now refraction will take place reflection internal reflection will take place as well as dispersion all of these will be there right in the same manner field of view so we will talk about field of view will be maximum for convex mirror. How it is maximum, I'll tell you. Okay. We'll do a telescope question, which would be the last question for the day. An astronomical telescope has a magnification of phi for distant objects. The separation between the objective and eyepiece is 36 centimeters. So it means length of the tube is given as 36 centimeters. Where is final image found, beta? Final image is formed at infinity. Means which which eye condition? Relax. 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 Length of the tube. Kya hai? F0 plus Fe is how much here? 36 centimeters. Magnification is given as what? Phi. So can I say F0 by Fe will be phi or not? So what will F0 value be, guys? Phi times of Fe. You can use this and this. So what will I get? Phi Fe plus Fe will be 36. 6 Fe will be 36. Fe value will be six centimeters automatically f naught value will become 30 centimeters so what will be the uh, focal lens of objective and ips they are asking so what should be the answer beta 30 and six centimeters will be the answer clear clear all of you okay. we will do one more question field of view question because it is a simple question it's one minute is there field of view is maximum for which mirror Always remember it will be maximum for convex mirror, guys. Why? Because if you take a plane mirror, I'll take parallel rays, guys. 
if i take parallel rays falling on plane mirror what will happen are the incident rays along the normal or not so they are going to retrace its path so how much is the field of view here this is only the field of view if i take concave mirror guys if i take concave mirror and i am taking parallel rays again incident rays you can take incident rays we have taken to so concave mirror if i consider it will be converging the lens guys so here field of view will become less again okay in this much region only you will have means because they are converging field of view goes on decreasing whereas if i take convex mirror again if you take incident ray something in this manner what will it do beta convex mirror is going to behave as diverging mirror beta so what will happen this will be our field of view now this entirely will be our field of view similarly convex lens if you take convex lens also what will convex lens do convex lens is going to again converge the lens, converge the rays guys so for con convex lens also the field of view will be less so field of view will be maximum for which mirror convex mirror so remaining i think 10 questions are there some maybe around 10 15 questions we will complete those questions so if you if we just check 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 around 15 16 17 maybe 17 questions are there guys so we will uh, maybe one more question is also there 18 questions but as you can see there are direct questions in this so uh, we will we will be able to complete these in another 20 minutes the rest of the time i'll discuss wave optics okay clear all of you any doubts in today's session sir so could you give an idea could you give an idea about resolving power resolving power is very basic again what is resolving power basically if you take two objects you are keeping very close to the eye will you be able to see those two objects uh, clearly no so you have to keep them at some distance or not yes. yes so the separation between them will only be called as the minimum separation between the two objects such that we can distinctly see the objects will be called as the resolving power of any instrument clear yes sir any doubt in today's session all of you whatever pending questions are there i will discuss tomorrow and hopefully we will complete almost 70% of wave optics tomorrow guys okay clear all of you sir ji yes, sir sir what about uh, field of view for concave lens concave lens also it will be more but option is not there no here more than convex lens yeah convex I mean, lens so converging hai na no i cannot say it depends on the curvature again if i if i say convex mirror is more bulged then it will have more field of view concave lens let us say is less bulged it will have less field of view it depends on the curvature again okay but usually we can say for convex mirror out of all the mirrors convex mirror will have more field of view out of all the lens concave lens will have more field of view but if i try to compare convex mirror and concave lens then i should talk about the curvature how are their curvatures related do they have equal curvatures if they have equal curvatures then their field will be uh, same yeah. is that clear yes sir when you are comparing convex mirror and concave lens then depending on the curvature we will see whether field of view for convex mirror is more or concave lens is more if i take equal curvature they both are going to have same uh, field of view in general but usually we cannot say that we have to definitely compare their curvatures any other doubt guys all of you i hope you have all understood the session okay So whatever left out doubts are there, we'll whatever left out questions are there, we'll discuss in tomorrow's class. Clear, all of you? Right. So we'll meet tomorrow, guys. Till then, take care.